Good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining with us today. We are broadcasting live from Park City, Utah, where I am. And Reza is in suburban Boston, right? Or in Boston proper? Yes. Yeah. So thank you for joining with us. Uh, as you know, we can't hear or see you, but we welcome and encourage questions. Um, please feel free to post your questions as they come to mind. Um, uh, as I said, we're, we're, we're joining you today from Park City, Utah, where I am, and Reza is in Boston. We are going to be recording this, and so if you care to review it after you've seen it, you're welcome to do so in a day or so. It'll be posted to the Family Office Insights YouTube channel. Um, and then if there's anybody that you think would benefit from reviewing it, you're welcome to share that link with them as well. Um, and please free for, feel free to do that. Uh, and we'll also know, please know and feel free that we're going to put you in direct contact with Reza uh, post webinar so you can um, feel uh, uh, welcome to connect with him directly. Uh, I want to thank Daniela. Uh, this is all her fault. She's uh, the one that um, kindly introduced Family Office Insights and me to Reza. And we're so happy for that. And uh, super appreciate those type of referrals from credible people. And so uh, thank you, Daniela, for doing that. Um, uh, as I said, we're uh, going to uh, have about an hour with you today. Uh, we have a lot of people coming on, so make sure you post your questions as they come to mind. So with that, Reza, take it away. Thank you for being here. Sure. Thank you for having me. OK, let me share my screen. And begin. Let's so, uh, so I started Zyra back in 2019, and it was uh, the idea was about bringing an environment that uh, allows professional service providers to uh, provide their services in a virtual environment. This is pre-pandemic time. So it's, and, and also to enable these professionals to join the gig economy. Uh, to date, we have raised about 1.3 million, 1 million in seed capital and have built our platform and are moving forward. Just a, just a brief introduction on the company for you guys. Um, the team is a very experienced team. It's, uh, we've been around the block many times. I've done over 10 startups myself. Uh, between the team, we have a good track record of, of, from a startup all the way to IPO and operating businesses uh, locally and, and internationally as well. So the work environment is, is changing, essentially. If you look at the U.S. data, we will see that this, this you know, the, the latest data in the census is up to like 2017-18, but in reality, over the last few years, it has exploded even further. The nature of small businesses is changing. Businesses, small businesses from being a multiple employee businesses are moving towards the single member businesses. And that's on a sharp increase. Today, when we look at the, that, the small business uh, unit in, in US, we see that the overwhelming majority of it is a single member business. And that's not a surprise because the, the, the individuals are gravitating towards being a solo practitioner, a solo provider, and especially with Gen Zs and millennials, this is, you will see this at a much higher steep rate, that they want to have, be, um, have the freedoms that being a solo practitioner brings them, they want to have the mobility, uh, etc. So looking at that data, we started looking at different verticals. What is the first vertical we want to pet? And we decided to go for, for the legal industry as the first vertical, not because it was the easiest, actually, because it was probably one of the hardest to hit, which would have opened up our path. In the, in the legal industry, when we look in US, we've got over 1.3 million attorneys. Out of that 1.3 million, about over half a million are solo practitioners or small firms of like two to five attorneys. Then there's a segment of the market that's usually um, uh, not attended to, and that's the inactive attorneys. We have over half a million inactive attorneys in US. About 300,000 of them are the ones that want to come back and work, but they don't have a path forward to work. And those are typically the ones that have gone off the grid 
for a few years and then they want to come back. Bigger firms don't hire them. And then they have a hard time establishing themselves as a solo practitioner. And the third category are the new attorneys. Every year about 35,000 new attorneys are graduating. And the trend with this Gen Z kids is that they don't want to go work for big firms. They want to be um, having their own individual practice. They want to have the freedom of geographical location and time and et cetera that goes with their generation. On the flip side of it, on the consumer side, there have been a lot of um, studies have been done in the US in terms of what is the market demand? How do we bridge the gap of access to legal advice? And the, the studies show that on average, about over 60% of American households have one pending legal matter that they're not addressing today. At one hour of consultation, that's $40 billion a year of unaddressed market. And typically they're not addressing it for very similar reasons. They don't know where to find the right lawyer. They think it's going to be expensive. They're always a little bit intimidated by anything that has to do with law and legal. So they just set out. They don't address it and they, they get advice from family or friends. Then we looked at these two segments and said, okay, what are their biggest challenges? Solo practitioners, the only thing, their biggest challenges are, how do I keep getting a steady stream of new clients? How do I reduce my overhead? And how do I increase my billable hours essentially? That's what's on their mind most of the time. And they spend about 47% of their time on non on administrative stuff, non billable hours. On the consumer's side, the, the biggest pain point for the consumers is how to gain access to affordable legal advice, how to uh, make it convenient and remove those inhibitions that exist with them to reach out to an attorney for a professional advice. So with that, that's how we created Zyra, Zyra.com. It's where attorneys can create their virtual presence or their virtual practice in less than six minutes, get all the tools that it requires for them to actually run a practice and get a steady stream of clients in the process as well. So feeding them the clients and letting them do their business and increase their billable hours. The platform, actually before this while I'm here, what I'd like to do, I'd like to give you a little glimpse of the platform. So if there are no questions. Yeah, Reza, uh, one quick thing. Um, I, I think it's the general feeling, I'm safe in saying this, is that when people think about attorneys, they don't really think that they're uh, struggling with business development. And I can't say why that's the case, but I think that's the general consensus. But in fact, especially the sole practitioners and small firms, it does consume a fair amount of their time. Uh, is that true? That's very true. It consumes about 47% of their time is spent on administrative things, not, not billable hours, to get their bills ready, send their invoices out, do their collection, do their marketing, make a presence for themselves on social media, et cetera, whatever that could get them the next client. They spend a lot of money, a lot of time on that. And, and then, and, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, and, go ahead. And, and then from the money they make, they typically spend 40% of it on overhead. The office is space that in, the, in, the, in downtown, the assistant they hire, the, the tools that they have to buy to run that practice, et cetera. So it's pretty interesting. That's why they really monetize less than two hours of their daytime. So we're going to see in a minute that there's business development aspects to this that are really important. In the absence of Zira, how are they doing business development now? They're just networking through um, through their, their uh, existing clients, word of mouth. That's the, that's the best way they get clients these days. In some metropolitan areas, it's very prevalent for attorneys to advertise. We see a lot of uh, personal injury attorneys that advertise in big cities like Los Angeles or Chicago, et cetera. Um, so that's the way of getting the message out. And now they have come to social media, advertising on social media, which is not cheap either, uh, but each one is doing it for themselves and they're spending a lot of money on, uh, on promoting their practice and, and, and their services. Yeah, got it. Thank you. So um, let's go back to 
Zyra. So I actually, if you can see my screen, I have, uh, I have uh, two browsers open side by side and I'm doing this for a purpose. So um, on the left, it's the consumer view as to go to Zyra.com. On the right, it's the attorney's dashboard, working environment dashboard. And I'm doing this so that you can see the interaction between the two. So for consumers, when they go to, uh, to Zyra, it's very simple, whatever their need is, if it's, uh, 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 whatever they, they have a, a legal problem with, whatever they can, they can do a quick search. And it gives them a list of attorneys that practice in that particular area. All the prevalent information is right there. Their name, their rating is there, the hourly rate the structure, how much they charge per hour, and whether or not they charge something for initial consultation or it's provided free of charge. And the first available time on their calendar that you can actually meet with them is right there on the card. Very simple and, 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 and to the point. Now, from a user's perspective, what I do here is I can tailor make this to my liking. I can, I can push this over to this side and these are attorneys I can meet in the next 15 minutes. Or if I have a particular price target in mind, that's what I do. I can filter based on that. Or I'm looking for an attorney that has no initial consultation fee. Quickly, I can find those. Or attorneys that accept a flat fee or contingency or go by rating or languages that they speak. And once I'm there, I can, I can pick the one that, uh, that I like to look at further. And I look at their bio and if they have posted a video of themselves or their practice, it's there. The bar is standing with their state information is right available at the finger trip and also their, uh, their educational background and their client surveys and reviews are there. More importantly, I have access as a user to what's available on their calendar. So I pick the time. There is no going back and forth what time is good for you and what time is good for me. So if I'm interested to meet with this particular attorney, Jane, today at 4.30 p.m., I'll just pick that time and confirm it. And as soon as I confirm that time, it gets on, on Jane's calendar and it also gets synced to her Outlook calendar or Google calendar or Apple calendar, whichever she happens to be using for her business purposes. When the time comes to meet, um, all I have to do as a client is just click go to, go to meeting. And that takes me to the virtual lobby. This meeting starts in two hours and one minute just about a minute before this button becomes active, I click it, boom, I'm in my video conferencing session with that attorney. So it makes it super easy, takes the inhibition out. I can do it from anywhere I am. I can do it from the comfort of my home or if I, even if I'm sitting in my car. And by the way, everything that I'm demonstrating, demonstrating here, Arthur, it's, uh, it can be done from our mobile app as well, including the video conferencing client is built into the mobile app and all the, all the features. And, and the video conferencing, for example, is it native to your app or is it Zoom or something like that? Uh, the video conferencing is the, is the only piece of technology which we have integrated. And we have picked Zoom for that te technology because they have the most solid, robust one. However, on Zyra, the, the video conferencing has double layer of security versus a regular Zoom conference where you can provide a, a password and a link. On Zyra, we have double layer security because you have to be logged into Zyra first and then we provide the keys to the, to the meeting room. So we've, we thought that the environment where the attorneys and clients are, are, are having a conversation or a consultation needs to be really private and secure. And, and one would argue that Zoom's you know, ubiquitous at this point, you know, no matter yes. what you're doing. Even if you're not in a business, you probably have Zoom on your phone. Of course. Yeah. And uh, and we have it, we have that application built within our app, so you don't need to download the Zoom app on your phone, on your mobile phone or tablet for that purpose. Yeah. It's built into it. Super helpful. So um, so this is this is the part that helps with client acquisition and starting the conversation going, and connecting the attorneys with potential clients. Now on the back end, for those attorneys that are not using not any technology for practice management or are using fragmented technologies for their practice management or those inactive ones that want to come back or the newly graduated ones that want to go solo. Our backend is perfect for them because it provides basically all the tools they need. The relationship between an attorney and client is started with a case. So if you're an attorney, you quickly come here, select your uh, 
select your client and whether it's a time and expense case or a flat fee or contingency, you quickly create your case and you create a billing methodology for that particular case. Whether you want it to get invoiced at the end of every week or at the end of every month or ad hoc, I can pick every time I do something on this particular case, how to invoice it. Once a case is created, the rest of it becomes um, very natural to how we do work. So if I'm looking at my client, John, and I just spent 22 minutes on a, uh, let's say a, a, a phone call for, for, for his purposes, I just put my notes and this particular case, it's one that I picked the date of the invoicing. So I say, okay, why don't you invoice them tomorrow on the 13th? And I create that. Once I create that, I'm done. I don't have to go back to that anymore. There's no paperwork for me to come and tally that anymore. On the 13th, this automatically becomes an invoice, gets sent to my client. Client receives the notification, click on it, and, and they go right into their invoices. They can open their invoice, view it, download it, print it, and they can also pay for it right there. So making that process of invoicing and payment um, really super simple. Oops, my card has failed. Okay. <laughs> So um, once the payments are done, the, the funds actually go right directly and sit in, the, in, in my wallet. Initially in the pending funds, and then it becomes available. Available funds in an attorney's wallet, you can, you can withdraw it at any time you want. So if I have 1600 in my wallet right now, and I want to take $1,000 out and send it to my operating account, my business operating account, I click it and instantly it gets ACH into my operating account and out of my Zyra wallet. We have also built, so, so this is the billing. And then once an invoice goes out, the attorney doesn't need to do anything. The reminders go out automatically by the system. And every 30 days, there is that if, if, if the invoice has not been paid yet, then we send an reminder to the attorney to let them know that this invoice is still outstanding. But in the meantime, all the notifications are available for the attorney to see what, no, what notices or reminders are going out. At the same time, what we also built in was document management. So if I'm, if I'm here, wherever I am, based on what case or what, uh, what uh, client I am, if I click on this, this is the document management folder for that particular case, property dispute of John Smith. On the client side, the client portal has exact, the, the client side has the exact same view as well. So document sharing between the attorney and the client becomes super secure, convenient, and easy to manage, and no IT support on the, on the attorney side. So if I go and, and take a document and I drop it, if, that, if the client wants to share it with the attorney, drop it on their side or vice versa, that document gets uploaded in a DOD level secured environment, notification goes out to the other party, the new document has become available for you to view. And, and Reza, in the absence of this, again, I think it's instructive that not use, you, the way it's being done now is just Dropbox or email, or, you know, it's just fragmented different things that everybody has to do. And, uh, this is all in one place. Exactly. So solo practitioners are, are kind of interesting. They, even the ones that use technology or use a practice management software, they use a practice management software and then they have a hard disk where they keep their files on and back it up. And they always worry about losing those files or if something happens to that physical drive. And then they, they go and subscribe for a Zoom account for, to, to meet their clients online. And if they're really sophisticated, they will subscribe to another service for an online calendar, for example. So a bunch of fragmented technology that they try to juggle in between all of them and they're not fully integrated. And then invoicing is another animal to, to be able to invoice efficiently and do it online rather than paper invoicing. And they send it usually on an email, which is not secure. And all this data that they, that they manage, with it, which in the legal industry is as important, if not more than the medical industry, is fragmented and it's all constantly in, a, in an insecure environment. So with, with Zyra, we've pulled it all 
into a very secure environment with a client portal that keeps everything safe and secure for everyone. The same with messaging as well, Arthur. So wherever you, I am on the platform with I mean, cases or activities or, or contacts, I can also message my, my clients really quickly and simply. So I don't have to give them my mobile number. They don't need to text me. I can send my messages quickly and, and privately and securely, and also keep a record of that conversation that goes back and forth. So to your point, rather than going back to emails for everything that you send, we have made it super easy to send messages back and forth and share documents back and forth in that secure environment. And is the functionality for the client, for example, an app that they download, or is it just a web-enabled uh, um, interface? Sure, it's it's an app that they download and they can do they can do everything we do here on an on their app. Yeah. Uh, even with document sharing, there there is a built-in scanner into the app, so you can actually take scan paper documents and it automatically goes directly right into your folder and the notification goes to your attorney as well. When you do yeah, that. so there's no barrier is what I, I'm getting at. It's just- No, no. It's, download it's, the it's, app and they're, and they're in. Exactly. You download your app, you have your, uh, you're connected to your attorney, just like your attorney card is here, or if you have multiple attorneys, right from there, you can contact them by messaging them. You can look at your uh, file folders, you can book an appointment for your next time that you need to meet with them. So actually it changes the behavior of how we do things. Because I've seen attorneys that are on Zyra right now, rather than telling their clients, I wanna see you Wednesday at two, which we don't know if the client can actually make Wednesday at two or not. They just send a message to their client and say, I need to see you for half an hour. Can you book it on my schedule? Which, which makes it very easy because the clients know their own availability and they can see their attorney's availability and they can pick that time. So I'm gonna switch back to our slides again. So this is, this is Zyra. It's an end-to-end -end from client acquisition to online booking, meeting space, billing and collection and document management. Fast forward, the future of Zyra is its growth into the B2B environment. B2B environment means opening the platform to also paralegals and allowing attorneys to work with one another as well on a case. So that is a huge portion of the market too. There are about 260,000 paralegals in the country today. And through Zyra, they will be able to be hired by attorneys on demand. So rather than firms, um, it's only the big firms that, that go out and hire paralegals and keep them. The smaller firms usually can't afford them. Having them on the platform allows firms to scale up and down on demand. Uh, hire paralegals and hire other attorneys to work on your case on this one particular case, and then it just stops and you go to the next one. So it makes the environment of a B2B between legal firms, younger attorneys, and paralegals much more efficient. Plus, when we built the platform and, and designed the architecture, it's designed for third-party plugins. Again, our intention is to have Zyra as a one place that these attorneys go and everything they need for their work environment is there. So anything from, um, from electronic signature to, to case searches to um, financial services, insurance services, if they're looking for malpractice insurance, they can find it on Zyra. There are companies that will present themselves on Zyra and they can look at different policy models. Electronic signature, if they will need to docu sign documents, it's a plugin on, on Zyra. So they can just write there, send the document directly to their client, have it docu signed and back. So the platform is designed today with those third parties in place. In terms of a, the competitive landscape, there are a lot of companies out there that do fragmented stuff. So if we look at the bigger ones, when you're talking about client acquisition, you have companies like Avo or OpConsole that, that they're primarily a search engine. It's like a white pages of, of, of attorneys, but that's all they do. You still have to pick up the phone. You still have to call the attorney. You still have to drive to their offices. So in, in every segment that we look at, it's a fragmented pieces of companies handling one portion or another, but, but nothing like what we do with end to end. Our revenue model is very simple. No barrier to entry. Attorneys can join Zyra. There is no upfront cost. Uh, they can get all the tools or they can get subset of the tool. It's, it's up to them. If they're already using um, their own practice management software and they don't want to switch over, that's totally fine. 
they can subscribe to the to the communication portion portion of it and the client portal of it, which is a subscription based model. And we also have a model that we let you be on the platform for just a dollar a month. With dollar a month, and this goes for the for the for the practitioners that want to go sold and start their practice practice especially for the ones that are not using any tools. This is this is ideal because virtually free beyond the platform. But the caveat is you have to be a connected uh, attorney. That means your calendar has to be connected and you have to have some availability during the month and also to be able to bill at least $4,000 a month. We had our revenue um, through a discounted portion of the credit card fees. We don't even up it. We don't add additional percentage to it. And then there are paid features. Uh, for those attorneys that have a subscription that they can do, and also the third party. So there are a lot of revenue streams, both transactional and uh, recurring revenues. Every new client that books a time with an attorney, we have a transactional revenue for, for a lead generation piece. We charge $30 today for every new client that books a time with an attorney. This is a still way below what attorneys pay for lead generation companies or leads that come to that. In terms of the technology, I won't get too far into this thing, but, but the design of the platform is extremely robust. We had it uh, actually audited by a company down in Atlanta, Bishop Fox. They, they went through it for a month to, for, for security checks and scalability. The platform as it stands today uh, has been tested for 30,000 simultaneous users and it can scale on demand. So for those who are interested in technology, I can share these slides later on. In terms of go-to-market, what we have done, we have test planned every single channel of go-to-market so to, to date with, with the initial funding we have had. So from law schools to promote uh, Zyra to the, to the graduating class of the law students, from social media channels to direct mailing to inactive attorneys, we ran uh, some um, TV commercials in Southern California for a period of um, uh, four weeks to see what the response to that is. Podcast, legal associations, all of those levers have been tried to, to sort of find the exact sweet spot for triangulation of go-to-market strategy. Now we're just, we have our data in place and we're just ready to, to scale. By markets, we started in California. So primarily in California, although we're not marketing most of our attorneys are in California from word of mouth. I, I, I don't know how they find themselves because we're not marketing yet. Um, and then followed by the next big states um, in terms of number of attorneys and population to scale it up, scale up completely. If no questions, I'll go to financials. Uh, I have a question if it's okay. So back to the, what did you discover when you, did all those tests that is oh, that you can share with us? Certainly. So um, with, with marketing, it's, it's actually interesting because you really need to triangulate in order to be successful. By triangulation, I mean, people have to see you on, in, in public forums like, like TV advertising, then they see you on social media, and then they read about you. And then they have that comfort zone that they will come and they will advocate. So when we did this, it was, uh, it was pretty successful because when we did TV commercials, instantly they were both on the client side and the attorney side. They got the interest to come on the platform. When we did the social media, some social media channels worked better than others, but LinkedIn, social, so LinkedIn worked better with attorneys, but not for consumers. Facebook was sort of sluggish for consumers, but when, it, when we combined it with the TV commercials, it just blew um, with with uh, direct mailers, we tried um, direct mail to a specific demographic in California. We sent out about 7,000 mailers to um, inactive female attorneys under the age of 55. You know, we, we picked that group and we said there are 7,000 of them. Let's, let's go out to them and see what the response is. Um, we also have an AI engine which we built an AI engine, which is connected directly. We can connect it directly to the court system. We tested it with, uh, with the LA County court system. So the day that uh, a case is filed against somebody else, we would get that data right away. The information 
care about the defendant is not available. So then our AI engine would go out in the, in the 50 mile radius, find the individuals with the same name. So they'll filter it down. And then we will have the re outreach to those individuals to let them know this is where you need it. You can find an attorney when you need it. And it's happening soon, perhaps. So, so we, have, we have tried all of these and we know which levers work better and which ones are more economical in a sense to do it. Because for example, with the, with the, with the AI engine going out to individuals, we did postcards and the postcards would cost about 85 cents a piece. Then in the next phase, what we did, we took those same names and we, we found them on social media through our AI engine and then targeted them on social media, then it would cost about two cents per impression. So it was much more economical. That's, those are the tests that have already been done. So that, when I say we're just ready to scale and execute is because a lot of this work has already been done. Sounds to me like you might've alerted some of the people that were gonna be involved in defending themselves in lawsuits that they didn't even know what was happening, right? Actually true, because we're, we're ahead of uh, the, the postal system. Yeah, we're yeah. much faster yeah. than the mail gets there. So let me get back here. So um, yes, again, um, our raise was 1.3 million to date. Uh, 80, about 87% of that funding has been spent on technology and, and the test trials of the market. Our seed extension uh, that we're looking to raise right now is two and a half million, and this is purely for scaling and growth. Uh, with, with that funding, uh, we, we will have about 3,000 attorneys on the platform, and our revenue will uh, be about 250 a month within the first 18 months, and we'll, we'll be looking for Series A at that point. And, and just it's interesting to talk about the future growth potential uh, because the the platform was designed in a, in a, a, right now for attorneys because that was the most difficult model to build for. But for the future of it, the same platform could also be used for a number of different verticals, education and tutoring, insurance accountants, financial consultants, health consultants. The platform with the capabilities that it has works exactly the same though it's with the slight tweaks in terms of verbiage that's used or the or the markets that it's uh, that it's marketed to just something that we have you know in back of our mind for some time in the future once we have uh, launched the first one successfully so we have a related question to that sure uh, what are the possibilities for zero to interface with deal room for transaction management team support capital raising m a due diligence that sort of thing uh, we have all the open APIs into our system. So we can, with deal room, it's not going to be difficult for us uh, at all in terms of plugging it in as, as part of a tool for that. That's, that's how the architecture was built. It's a very open architecture in that sense. And the benefit is that you could use all the functionality that deal room doesn't have and just feed the data in. Correct. Yeah. Totally makes sense. Yeah. So, so for a deal room environment, even for like document sharing and document storage, the same you can use the same structure that's already there, or you can use the, the structure that Zyra has. We can we can take and replace the parts that are necessary. Got it. Okay. So um, let me just go a few more backups and. And these are just some testimonials uh, from attorneys on the platform. And then the next slide, some clients that have been on the platform, which might be of interest to some of the audience. So what, what is the, the Clio seems to have a lot of the market share. Uh, why would somebody, if they were using Clio, they could just abandon it and come over? Well. In, in, in case of uh, this particular attorney, it's cost, cost. Uh, I think she was paying about $150 a month for Clio. Um, and the Clio was only practice management for other things she had to pay extra. And, and she figured, you know, Zyra would be a great ideal place for her to be because it would virtually cost her nothing for the, for the tools that she gets. And then she has the visibility on the marketplace as well. Clio is the biggest, um, company in the, uh, in, in the legal tech in part for, the, for practice management. Um, 
to date, they have raised billions to build that company, essentially, the, 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 the big elephant in that, organ, in that, in that group. But yet, um, just back in March, uh, the, the legal week for the first time after the pandemic, it was, it was not virtual anymore, it was in New York. And at the end of the week, actually, the, we got selected as the winner of 2022 for game-changing practice management software. So we're very proud of that to, you know, to be um, next to companies like Clio or, or, or others, which are really big and have been in this market for a long time. So can we talk about that? Okay, no, continue and then I'll ask. Sure, no, I just wanted to switch over to some client uh, excerpts then. Yeah, it seems to me like a business to business development way. It, uh, it it's just just naturally a fit, right? Right, right. And and one thing that you know we we notice is from the client side because it becomes really simple and non intrusive, and they and they meet and get advice from attorneys from the comfort of their own space. Um, what's interesting and new is that. They don't meet an attorney and hire that attorney on the spot unless they have a chemistry with that attorney. They they are we're finding it more and more that they actually meet with a couple of attorneys before they selecting one, which is a new approach because I, I think all our lives, most of the time, we have been introduced to an attorney by someone that we know, and 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 almost. 95% of the time, we end up hiring that attorney when we meet them, whether we like them or not, whether we have chemistry with them or not, that's what that's what that's how we do it. But now this desire is actually changing that a little bit, which is refreshing. Yeah, and there's the, the intimidation factor if you're actually getting up and going to their office and you know you feel kind of obligated to hire them if they went through sure. that list, there's a red flag all over the place, yeah. Absolutely. And, and we also see a lot of clients that are addressing their issues because they're finding uh, more affordable legal advice. Uh, you know, it's, for the life of me, it, it surprised me when I looked at some of our data and some of the attorneys which are young and, and not a lot of experience, they've been out of college maybe for like other law school for maybe uh, four or five years, but they happen to be less expensive than everybody else. Even though they were in that segment, they would still get traction from certain individuals, which, which what it showed us is that the, the cost factor is a barrier for a lot of people to get professional or legal, good legal, or legal advice. Um, so I it allows that to happen. It, it brings everybody together. It makes it easy for you to find, find an attorney based on your needs, whether it's the credentials, maybe it's the, whether it's the experience or if it's cost or time of availability. And it's, and it's much easier to have three Zooms and say no to two than have three meetings. And, right. Right. You're, you're not even going to go to the second meeting after the first, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Super interesting. So can we talk a little bit about, even though you probably can't predict exactly what's going to happen, but what what's your thoughts about, you know, you scale, you open up another business silo. Is, is this something that's going to get acquired? by Clio or, you know, and I'm not asking you to predict, but you obviously must be thinking about this. And as investors, you know, you know, okay, you scale, you get 250,000 of revenue, the value of the shares go up, but what's the, what's the exit, if any, you think? So fortunately in our team, we have, we have co-founders and, and people in team that have experience in all those different paths. Um, my my co-founder has, has had three, uh, IPOs in the last seven years. So if we need to go in that path, we know we know how to get there. Um, in terms of acquisition, that's always a possibility. We have already had conversations with um, much larger firms. I, I, I can't divulge their names, but the one in the legal industry, another one in the in the work professional space industry. That they have reached out, uh, reached out, and and looked at our platform, and we are still in those conversations of whether white labeling to them so that they can use the same facility on the, on, with their own name, or or some other way to to work. So those possibilities always exist. I would never say no to any potential business 
um, transaction that could benefit you know, the company and its investors. Um, but there are multiple paths open to us. With the scaling, certainly the valuation of the company, the, with the scaling that we're looking at, at, at uh, with, with this round, the valuation of the company will substantially be higher uh, and much easier path to our next raise and, uh, and, and the path forward into it. With marketplaces, there's always a concern with a, with a lot of investors in terms of marketplaces because marketplaces are a chicken and egg situation. They say, okay, do you have to spend money on both sides of this market? We say no, actually. It's, it's, for us, it's important to have a critical mass in every market of enough attorneys. And what I mean by that is, as long as I have a scroll bar of attorneys in California, uh, in, in a practice area, which doesn't require a lot of attorneys, I'm good there. I'm not going to spend another dollar to bring another attorney on. I'm going to spend my funding on the consumer side to bring them to the platform. Once the consumers come to the platform, attorneys will naturally come anyway. They, they go, it's just like honey, you know, be to the honey, essentially. That's where they go. Um, and and with, with the few attorneys that we have in California, pretty much any of the practice areas that you go into, you do get some sort of a scroll bar. So a state of a big state like California with 170,000 attorneys, as long as I have 500 in California, I'm done. I'm not going to spend another dollar on bringing another attorney on. They will come by themselves. Yeah, it'll just grow naturally, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So what what uh, are you going to expand state by state, you think? Uh, only the first first few big states. And, and, and that would put us in, in a position that our marketing can then be done nationally. Uh, we're open right now to in, in all states. Um, the bigger states you can go and join and, and people can come there. If there are some attorneys there, they can still find them. Um, I'm in Massachusetts. We're, we don't have a lot of, we have very few attorneys in Massachusetts. But for example, if you're looking for an immigration attorney in Massachusetts, you will find a few in Massachusetts because they're not here. They're actually in Florida or California or other states. That's, that's how it works with federal law. Uh, the practice areas like immigration, IP law, bankruptcy, these are federally mandated. So you as an attorney on the platform can choose and say, uh, list me nationally only, or only list me in my, uh, in my state. And a lot of these immigration attorneys are listing themselves nationally for the areas that they work. So anybody around the country that searches for a, a, a green card attorney or, or an immigration attorney will be able to find one, could be somewhere else. I wasn't aware that it totally makes sense. What 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 is it? What's a comfortable check size? You know, do you want five investors in this round? Do you want two? Do you want ten? It's always easier when there are when there are less. Uh, it it also helps the investors take a a more active role in participation in the company as well. Um, but what if we don't have a limit to that? I mean, the preference is always less number of investors, but we, we have had it even in our seed round, uh, we had it that some of the investors wanted to um, invest a smaller amounts and we asked them to sort of consolidate together and come as one and they did that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you don't have multiple LPs and all the headache that goes along with that. Are you taking this round in as a convertible note? Yes. Yeah. It's okay. a it's a convertible note with a, a discount rate of twenty four percent and six percent interest. So so far, if you had to say what the best, the profile of a good investor is, uh, for you, what's that look like? You don't have to tell us who they are, but about uh, three fourths of uh, my investors are. Uh, I would say experienced angel investors that they uh, have invested in the past and uh, they have been, they have either been in executive positions uh, in the past or they have been uh, investors in the past. So uh, very qualified investors. Yeah. Yeah, totally makes sense. So um, uh, I think that Reza might be a good time now to sort of just summarize what you're uh, what you're gonna do after you raise the money, and then uh, we'll make sure everybody gets in touch with you. But uh, uh, you know, 
so, sort of just a closing statement, if that's okay with you. Sure. sure. So um, raising, uh, after this raise, our objective is to scale. And the, what that means is uh, properly start marketing ourselves in those, in those markets that are intended, California, New York as the first ones, um, to bring on the attorneys and to do more of an outreach marketing to the public so that they know there is a place that they can go for those what if moments that they need legal advice. Um, so uh, most of our marketing dollars are going to be spent then on the, on the consumer side and the awareness and brand, brand recognition and awareness of the service. Great. And yeah, other than that, uh, I would say out of this round, round probably not more than 5% needs to be spent on technology upkeep because our technology is very solid and, and we've totally built it. Uh, so it's it's all go to market uh, expenditure pretty much. And is the is it AWS S or Azure where you're in in the cloud? We're we're on AWS Secure Service. Yeah. So one one thought before we wrap it up, I was just thinking: Do you have a sense of what silo you'll go after next? Uh, the the next silo tutoring and education is an attractive one because the competition that's out there. Uh, it's not at par and it's expensive for tutors and teachers. Uh, the, for, for that silo, uh, tutors and teachers tend to pay about 25% to 40% commission of their earnings. Uh, on, 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 a, on a platform like Zyra, that becomes negligible for them. So yeah. they, will, they will keep more of what they earn. It gives the students um, a higher level of... Uh, ability to be able to find the right uh, right tutors and, and to schedule them right there as well. That so, totally so, makes sense. Yeah. And there's such a demand yeah. for that now too. Yeah. Right. And, and, other, and other verticals we've looked at, uh, for example, the, 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 finan the financial accountants, for example. The accountants, uh, we've interviewed a number of accountants and they have looked at the platform and they like the platform purely for the mostly for, for its bidding functionality. Uh, everybody, all these professionals, one of the biggest challenges is, is the bidding functionality and, and, and the payment mechanism and, and to get paid on time and, and have somebody chase it. So that's, that's one of the biggest challenges that a lot of industries have. Yeah, super interesting. Well, this has been great. And again, Daniela, thank you very much for arranging this. Um, and uh, Reza, thank you for being so super clear. That was awesome. Um, and uh, as I said to the group, we make sure that you're in direct touch and feel free to communicate directly with Reza and we'll, we'll make that happen. And we'll be posting the video and the recording on the Family Office Insights YouTube channel. And as I always say, thank you for spending with us. The only thing you can't make more of and that's your time. Thank you, Reza. Thank Until you. Take care. Bye-bye.